Hi everyone, welcome to a brand new business vlog. I have some footage from January that I thought I would mash up together for you. It's been a stressful week after all of this footage corrupted, but I have got it back and I hope you enjoy. I've decided I wanna switch out this wall hanging right here for something new. I think the colors just need updating. The other week I posted a tutorial and pattern for this. So I'm gonna just use my own pattern and make myself a new one. I did already make this orange one, but realized it was a bit too matchy with this frame that I already have on my wall. So I've decided to go with this color scheme instead using my good old faithful Yarn & Colors Epic Cotton Yarn. I'm now just thinking about what colour I want to make the single crochet border around this. I was going to choose orange but I feel like it might get lost when it's hung up on my wall. So I think I'm going to contrast it with pink. Yeah, that's cute. Okay, let me add some tassels, attach it to one of these bamboo wooden rods that I have and then it's ready to hang up. Oh and obviously we've got this situation to deal with off camera. <laughs> I've just received a yarn delivery from Love Crafts. I ordered some yarn because I'm in the middle of a pattern update for this project right here, which I call the Paisley Waistcoat. Love Crafts accidentally sent me double knit instead of Aran weight, but they were really nice about it. They said, keep that one and we'll send you out a new one free of charge. But I thought I'd just show you the color combination together. So I've gone with cream, this denim blue and a pastel yellow. Okay, here we are. Here's what it's looking like so far. It's looking good, but as you can see, I have run out of yarn. We did not win yarn chicken today. I did dig out my emergency stash of scrap yarn and I thought about using this to finish it, but even with this, I don't think it's gonna be enough. I hope you can relate to the pain of this. You know what? I'm just gonna frog one row and just do the last row in the lemon colour. And then I can use this to finish off the arm holes. Okay, yeah, let's do that. The majority of this pattern now has been written. I just need to make it look all pretty for the document, you know? And obviously finish taking some last minute pictures. Project is finished. As you can see, I have just spent the morning taking some very last minute pictures for the pattern, which I'm writing right here. And also, I'll 
be late by the time this video gets posted, but happy Lunar New Year. Last night I stayed up till like 2am trying to pick my testers. Thank you to those who did apply, I really appreciate your time and your help. Obviously, I can't pick everyone because I need to make sure that certain sizes and criteria are met to make sure I get a good mix of people. Let me take you back to the top. So this is what I'm working with so far. As you can see, there are some pictures missing, which is why I've made a to-do list of what I still need to add. Here I'm using Microsoft Publisher. I know some people use Canva, which I have been experimenting with for my YouTube videos because I want to try and upgrade my editing a little bit this year. And as you can hopefully see, the general design and look of the pattern matches in with the project itself using the same colour scheme. I just think it's a nice little addition when you're working with a pattern. And then once it's finished with Publisher, I can just export it as a PDF. Also, I don't know if I ever showed you what colours I used for this project, but this is the brand of yarn and I used the colours Denim, Lemon and Cream. The Paisley Waistcoat is my fifth pattern release and second group of testers. So, I think I'm still very much learning how to work and write with patterns, but if you would like a full video on the process from designing to releasing the pattern itself, then I'd be more than happy to film a full, more extensive video. Okay, welcome to this segment of Small Crochet Business Supplies Update 2023. I'm not here to gatekeep, I want to help out as much as I can because I know a few of you have said that you're starting crochet businesses. So today I want to show you everything that I have received in terms of packaging supplies in the past week. Obviously, just a quick note, I am based in the UK so some of the places that I order from may vary in terms of delivery to wherever you are in the world. But generally this should give you an idea of what to look out for if you do research. If you are interested in anything seen today then I will have all the links in the description below for you. So way back when I first started my business business, I originally used organza drawstring bags that my yarn deliveries arrived in with a biodegradable mailer bag. Then when I started to generate a little bit more income, I upgraded to small parcel boxes like this. And now I am switching to large letter boxes, which look like this. So they arrive flat pack, just like this. You build them yourself, but it's super easy. One of the main reasons I switched to large letter boxes is because the postage is much cheaper. So in the UK, I use Royal Mail and they categorize their deliveries in terms of letter, large letter, small parcel, and then anything bigger, medium, large parcel, etc. This stuff's kind of boring, but I feel like it might be helpful. <laughs> so I think because you can deliver these through a mailbox, it is cheaper. And plus most of the stuff that I'm making recently is only small projects, so they can fit in boxes like this very easily. By switching to cardboard, it's also less plastic, which is a plus. And the only mailers that I use like this now are for international orders, just to give some extra security when I send them off. For all of my boxes, I use Happy Pack. They specialise in super affordable packaging for small businesses, and they include tape, tissue paper, stickers, basically everything that you think you might need for your business, they probably have. A lot of other places are for larger businesses that do more wholesale and you don't need 500 boxes. The great thing about Happy Pack is that they sell in small quantities. Next up I ordered some stickers. So I ordered some logo stickers for wrapping, blank address labels for sending off packages and also some return sender labels which I'm not going to show on camera because they do have my address on. I get these from a business called Nelly and Ted on Etsy. They are a really eco-friendly and conscious business. I've also found it to be the best quality and best price for personalised stickers. I've bought these several times now and Sophia who runs the business has always been so lovely and helpful. Next up another fun one. I have reordered and redesigned some business cards. I have tried a few printers in the past and I found this business called Zola's on Etsy but they also have an Instagram and a website you want to check them out. So I just ordered 20 of each because it was a new design I wanted to see what it looked like. The first is an empty thank you card with some washing and care instructions on the back and then for the first time I also want to include more of like a decorative card with my orders. So I designed this illustration myself and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Considering I'm not a graphic designer I'm pretty proud. Stuff like this for me is all about making slow upgrades with my packaging with every milestone that I make with this business. And finally, this is probably the most exciting one, but I reordered some fabric clothing labels. Just like the boxes, I did lots of research to finally find the ones that I love. 
These are from a company called Contrado. They are satin fabric labels, so vegan friendly. And again, you can order small amounts of these, so it's not gonna be that expensive. And they're really cool. Whenever I have ordered from them, they always give me a few extra labels for free and you can get 10% off your first order as well. I found that they're really easy to sew with. So this is a, I think it's a 35 millimeter flat label. And I use a hair straightener, professional I know, to fold over the edges like this. This is just an example using some hats that I've used them on. So you can either sew twice, so one down this side, one down this side, like this. But recently I've changed it to this style of sewing. So I fold the label over the edge of a project and then just sew once over this side. Now it's time to make an order. Every day for me starts with checking my to-do list and emails. I was someone who preferred physical pen and paper lists, but for daily use this is much better. My routine can vary after that. Today of course I'm making this bottle holder order. Some days I'm on my laptop all day writing and editing. Someone asked if I had any tips for balancing this business with study and other things and to be honest, I left school a very long time ago, but in the past few months, I've been studying from home for something non-crochet related. Most of the time, it was a case of finishing my crochet day, having something to eat, and then completing a module before bed. Using that same to-do list app, I was able to plan when I would complete modules. Usually it was two to three a week, so I could reach a deadline and set myself. So I guess my simple advice is to plan your time well and be honest with yourself. If I know I'm not gonna feel like working at a certain time of day, then I won't plan to. I guess that's also a perk of being self-employed. My business has changed quite a bit from my last business type video. There's now a lot more pattern writing because I found my audience was mostly crocheters. So I'm just adapting to what they would like to see. And to be truthful, it's also earning me more money than selling physical items. So I'm gonna work towards what sells best because it is a business. So I've taken away my made to order products, but custom orders are still open. Last summer, I worked really hard on the made to order products, but I don't feel like I'm taking a step back by getting rid of them. Don't be afraid of changing your business strategy again and again if you're finding what works for you or just generally feel like your crochet business needs a boost. I'm learning that change is good and for me it equals growth. This year expect more patterns from me. I've also got some goals for my YouTube and videos and I'm hoping for some change in my personal life as well. I hope you enjoyed this chaotic mashup today. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And thank you as always for your support of this little crochet business. Take care, I'll see you in the next one.